So when you stuff everything in the duffel bag, have this tag sticking out so you know which size is in there. Because everything else about it will be the same. Um, sizing, regular if you're less than six feet, large if you're bigger than six feet, extra large if you're over six feet or around there and you want some extra room in there. Um, try to be fairly specific with this, because remember that insulation is that air that's in there. So if you're super small and you have a giant sleeping bag, you have a lot of air to try to warm up. If you're really big and you get a small sleep bag, you're going to compress that insulation, compress that air in there, and not going to stay as warm. So definitely size yourself correctly. Um, when it comes to the mug and the spoon, these will be brought back here and washed tomorrow morning. And these are magic spoons. They're magic because they like to disappear. They're the same color as the snow. So there's eight spoons here. We need eight spoons back here tomorrow morning because we're having a huge problem this year. Getting ordering spoons to come down here basically takes an act of Congress. So it's been a big deal trying to keep all of our spoons this year. Um, scrounging around the station to try to get extra spoons. For a while we ended up with these tiny little plastic spoons um, about that big. And that's all we could find. So keep track of these. I know it's stupid that we can't find spoons, but it is a big deal. So I want eight spoons back here tomorrow. When it comes to sleeping warm, one of the biggest keys is going to be that those dry socks, those sacred sleeping socks that are only for sleeping. Um, if I have cold feet, I'm not happy. I'm not going to sleep. Um, so dry socks is the first step towards having warm feet. Um, food, keep some snacks in your sleeping bag with you. Um, if you have a base layer that has pockets, I'll have a snack right here so that when I wake up in the middle of the night cold. I can pull out M&M's or a candy bar or something that I don't, really don't even have to move. I can eat um, tucked away in my sink bag. And that will warm me up. When it's really cold, I like to go to bed with a hot water bottle. I usually put that down at my feet, keep my feet warm. And then every time I wake up in the middle of the night, take a drink of water. Stay hydrated so you're not going 6, 8, 10, however many hours you sleep um, without any water. So keep that hydration going. And that also leads to having to go pee. So I'll keep a pee bottle close to me. Just make sure in the middle of the night um, you grab the right bottle. <laughs> so have some, most of the people have some tape on it or something. So have a way to differentiate between the pee bottle and the water bottle. Um, I start with my pee bottle outside my bag and then use it. And then keep it inside my bag. Make sure it's sealed. Um, and then I have a new hot water bottle. If you do have an accident, in your sleeping bag, your pee bottle spills, um, not a big deal. Just tell me and set this bag aside tomorrow morning so the next group um, isn't sleeping in your pee soaked bag. Um, bring them back to the station and wash it. Not a big deal. I've um, spilled my pee bottle in my sleeping bag at the beginning of a three week expedition. It's going to happen if you spend enough time in a sleeping bag in the winter. So just let me know. Um, and if it is really bad, come back and get a new sleeping bag. There's a bunch of extra in there for tonight, so not a big deal. Um, layers. I like to de-layer enough so that I can be comfortable. I don't like sleeping in all my layers. Um, and if you have too many layers, all that insulation is going to be, be compressed. Um, with big red, a couple options for that. It, can, it works as a great pillow. You can drape it over your sleeping bag if you're cold. Uh, my favorite thing is to zip it up. I put it over the foot box because again, if I don't have cold feet, I'm not going to sleep. So I just have that as an extra layer of insulation around my feet. So that's a good option for big red. And especially if you're sleeping in a trench or a tent with three people, it's kind of a task to organize all your stuff and get settled in, so you're going to be moving around a lot. So that's going to warm yourself up. So that cold pizza and the cold oven idea. The warmer you can be when you get in your sleep bag, the warmer you're going to stay. Or if you wake up in the middle of the night, you're cold, you had something to eat, had something to drink, you're still cold, do some sit-ups or wiggle around a lot in your sleep bag, warm yourself up while you're still inside. Um, set yourself up for success in the morning. I am definitely not a fluffy bunny in the morning. So the more I can do the night before to make myself happier, the next morning the better. Um, Definitely not going to be a fluffy bunny when I have cold boots and cold gloves to put on. So I'll keep my boot liners inside my bag. Um, 
along with the socks I wore the day before so those can dry out and warm up. So I'm not putting freezing cold socks and cold boot liners on my feet. Um, I'm obviously not going to put boots or those muddy boots inside your sit bag. Um, but as long as everything that's going in those boots is warm, you're good to go. Um, I might wake up, crack hand warmers, throw them in my boots. Um, while I'm getting everything else ready, that's warming my boots up. Um, gloves, especially my thinner gloves, those are going to go inside my sit bag with me. So I can wake up, put on warm gloves. Um, Anything that's wet, what layers, what socks, um, I will I put them between the layers that I already have on. Like what socks, put them right here and jerk them up to your shoulders. Yeah, you're smelling your sticky feet all night, but you'll have dry socks when you wake up in the morning. Don't put them underneath you, because they're not going to breathe at all and you're going to wake up with dry socks. So I like to put them within my layers and they're definitely going to be dry when the morning comes. Um, I usually fall asleep with the hat on, because um, your head is the most exposed area there. Um, so yeah, the more you can do at night, have everything within reach so you're ready to go in the morning, the better off you'll be. Because you, you're laying there all night, you're going to be dehydrated, you're going to be hungry, you're going to be cold. Um, and it's going to be, it's usually the coldest part of the day. So the more you can set yourself up for success, the better you and the rest of your group will be. Some things with these sleeping bags. Most of these sleep bags are rated to anywhere from 40 to 60 below. And it's not going to be that cold today. So a couple things you can do um, so you're not totally overheating. You probably won't have this all the way zipped up tonight. But if you do, keep this upper part open. Let that warm air escape so you're not waking up in a sweat. When it's super cold, that's when you're going to close this all the way down. So just your head, or close it down so that just your mouth and nose are sticking out. Because you don't want to breathe inside your sick bag. That's just going to be moist air that's going to condense so you're going to end up um, sleeping in a wet environment. So you want to exhale out of your sleep bag and let all that frost form on the outside instead of the inside. I don't want to come to be over right now. What was that? I said I kind of want to come to be over right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not fair. Um, some of the sleep bags will have a draft collar, which is a little tube that will go in here that you can tighten down and that keeps all the cold air, or the, all the warm air inside your sleep bag. Another option for tonight, if you're sleeping warm, um, they zip up from zip open from the bottom too, so you can vent that way as well. And then we have the fleece liner. This is probably going to be your best option for a pillow tonight. You're definitely not going to need it for staying warm. But when I'm in the field, I use it all the time. It's a really good way to regulate your heat inside your sleep bag. I start out with it up to my neck. And then as I warm up throughout the night, I may bring it down to my waist or all the way down to my feet. If I get cold again, I can pull it back up. Um, so lots of options for this. You don't have to grab one, but they're nice as a pillow or who knows, maybe you'll just sleep in this and have your sleep bag draped over you or something like that tonight. Um, since it is warm, if it even drops below freezing tonight, um, there's a bunch of options for places to sleep. The coldest place to sleep right now is going to be in a trench, so that might be the most comfortable place to sleep. We'll talk about building those once we get out there, because the tents are going to be pretty warm. Um, any questions about sleeping warm or building sleep kits?